Praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Magnify the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the Holy One. There is nobody like our Savior. There is nobody like our Father. He's the friend that seeketh closer than a brother. The Word of God says that there is no greater love than this. That a man would then lay down his life for a friend. We have a friend in Jesus. There's nobody like him. Aren't you glad to have a friend in him? Aren't you glad that he's reliable? He's dependable. He's faithful. There's nobody like our Savior. So right here in this moment, chosen ministries, all over the sanctuary, I want you to open up your mouth and begin to tell God, thank you. Thank him for being a friend. Thank him for being a keeper. Thank him for being a healer. There's nobody like our Savior. Come on, let him hear you. Let him hear your worship. Hallelujah. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me?
Father God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Father God. Father God, we come before you right now thanking you for showing up today, Heavenly Father, for moving throughout this church, Heavenly Father. We thank you on today, Heavenly Father, for giving us another opportunity to praise your name, Heavenly Father, for some didn't have this opportunity, Father, so we don't take it for granted, Heavenly Father. Father, like the cherubims, Father, we will sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, Heavenly Father, for you are worthy of all the praise and all the honor, Heavenly Father. We just thank you on today, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now we set the atmosphere, Heavenly Father, for you to move how you want to move, Father. We set the atmosphere, Father, for healing right now, Father. We set the atmosphere right now, Father, for deliverance right now, Heavenly Father. We set the atmosphere, Heavenly Father, for yokes being destroyed, Heavenly Father. Father, and chains breaking off your people on today. Heavenly Father, we receive, Heavenly Father, your spirit on today, Heavenly Father. For where the spirit of the Lord is, Heavenly Father, there is liberty, Heavenly Father. There is freedom, Heavenly Father. There is peace, Heavenly Father. There is provision, Heavenly Father. You are, Heavenly Father, I am that I am that I am. Everything that we need, Heavenly Father. So we ask you one today, Heavenly Father, to fill us, Heavenly Father. Fill us with your word, Heavenly Father. Fill us, Heavenly Father, with your power and your touch and your love and your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father, that was shed on the cross 2,023 years ago, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving your only begotten Son, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you didn't have to do it, Father, but you saw fit, Father. You saw fit to do it anyway, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now in the name and by the blood of Christ Jesus, Yahshua, Heavenly Father, we just ask you right now, Heavenly Father, to open up our hearts, Heavenly Father, open up our ears and our minds, Heavenly Father, so we may hear what you have to say on today, Heavenly Father, right now in the name and by the blood of Jesus, Father, we find all distractions right now, Heavenly Father. We find all disruptions, Heavenly Father, from the outside that tried to come in here with us, Heavenly Father. We free our minds so we may be able to hear what thus saith the Lord, Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father, you said, Father, in all you're getting, get understanding, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name and by the blood, blood of Christ Jesus, Father, we ask you to speak through our pastor, Heavenly Father, think through her mind, Heavenly Father, and speak through her vocal cords, Father. Father, allow her to keep bringing the word, Heavenly Father, with your power, Father, and your conviction, Heavenly Father, so that we may be free, Heavenly Father, so that someone may come to you, Father, so at the end, when it's all said and done, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servants, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for these things, Heavenly Father. We believe you for these things, Heavenly Father. In the name and by the blood of Christ, Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. God, we want your spirit to rise in this place. We want your power to rise in this place. God, see your healing. See your deliverance, God. God, we lift our hands as a sign of surrender. We're ready to receive from you. Hallelujah.
medicine right there. If you believe in God for his healing power, if you believe in God for deliverance, if you believe in God for salvation, it may not even be future for somebody that you know or for somebody in your family. I know you open up your mouth and bless them like it's already done. Open up your mouth and praise them like it's already done. While you're in his house blessing him, he's at your house meeting your needs. He's at your house turning things around. Thank yourself for me with you. God, we honor you. There's nobody like you. We believe you. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. We shall believe the report of the Lord. His promises are yea and amen. Everything that he spoke shall come to pass. God, we believe you. God, we trust you. He said, trust in you with all of our hearts. And lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you. We acknowledge that you're Lord. We acknowledge that there's nobody like you. We acknowledge how great you are. We acknowledge how awesome you are. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Come on, keep that. I need to be talking differently, God. I need to hear your voice, Father. 
in the seventh month. Who knows you? And everybody talks about the seventh month is completion. But what God was saying to me this morning, He said, Don't I tell my people that there was something I told them to do from January to June. And they're still sitting on that thing. And so I need for you in the next 31 days, how did I see it? To do what God has told you to do. God says the prophetic will work in the hour when your obedience is in alignment with it. Who am I talking to? God says, I have told you to do something January 1st. Now we're in July the 2nd. And if you want me to see my hand moving, you got to move in the spirit and be obedient. Who am I talking to today? We got to move in obedience in the hour of God. Come on. We got to move. Come on. In the obedience of the hour of God. Uh -huh. So it's up to you. And you won't get what you got to get. It's up to you. How do I see it? To hear God's voice. How do I see it? You don't need me to tell you how he sounds to you. Because see, when you are in that sweet place with God, he will sound different to you huh, than he sounds to me. How did I say it? But what will be the same huh, is the spirit of God. God will wake you up in the midnight hour. Come on, when all the demons are sleeping to give you the revelation knowledge for your plan. to give you the plan that's specifically for you. Y'all got to stop going to your friend and them asking for revelation, knowledge, and confirmation. This is a season that you will have to walk it yourself. You're not isolated. You're covered in the hour. So God is saying in order for you to move in revelation, knowledge, you got to be comfortable with being covered by Yourself. That's when you can go to God and get the true word of God. You don't need a preacher. 
prophet to come and tell you what's wrong with you. Huh? And they trying to guess your social security number, baby, that's a witch. Uh, who are you talking to? My social security number ain't got nothing to do with my sin. Can you speak to the sin that's in my life? Why am I in love with a married man? Huh? Why, why, why am I putting myself behind the scenes? I don't care if you know that I got a cousin named Joe. But what I do care about in this season, if you know that I am suicidal, watch what I care about in this season. Who am I talking to? But that's what I care about. Huh. And not about Joe. I ain't even talk to Joe. to the word. Thank you. I need you to back me up, okay? We're going to do we're going to do communion at the end of this thing. God, have your way in this place. We're going to be in the book of Second Peter. Have your way, God. That's it. Uh-huh. Second Peter, the third chapter. If you all can stand for the reading of the word. Little people, hold tight, hold tight. Elder Joyce is like, we getting ready to leave, y'all. All the little people, raise your hand. Okay, we got a few. All right. All right. Y'all just hold tight. Y'all come out here. Come on out here. And go right here by Elder Joyce. Elder Joyce, sit right there. They're getting a little nervous. They say, I'm talking too long. That's right. All right, baby. You go right there. Y'all line up real nice. Nice and quiet. And stop right there, right there. Don't move too quick. Hey. Don't move too quick. Y'all just hold tight, okay? All right. All right. We're going to be real quick. They get, they start sad at me. Uh, all right, so we'll be in uh, the second Peter, the third chapter, uh, beginning at verse one. It says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by the way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Verse 5, for this day will fully uh, forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water. Verse 6, by which the world that then exists perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly man. We're almost done. Verse 8, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and as a thousand years as one day. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now y'all go march in glory. There you go. Two by two. We pray for you, Elder Joyce. There you go. There you go. The order will you help. There you go. All right, put your, your dress down, girl. There you go. There you go. All right. Let's go. You ready? Because you know I'm coming out. All right. Turn to your neighbor. How did I see it? And say, you need to be mindful and watchful. You need to be mindful and watchful. That's it. All right, in this text, Peter had written a second epistle to remind believers that a time was approaching for the return of Christ. As it said in the text, he wanted to stir up 
the pure minds of the believers to be mindful and watchful over God's word. Peter knew then, as we know that now, that we are living amongst the days of turmoil, confusion, discord, and danger. He specifically calls out the scoffers who become in the last days entangled in the lust of their flesh and doubting the second coming of Christ. Peter wanted to remind you and I that we ought to be mindful and watchful over God's words as it relates to this world and as it relates to our life. Are you all hearing me today? Peter said we ought to be reminded yet a second time that Christ is coming back. Line it up, Pastor. I don't mind if I do. See, when we are watchful, we are expecting for God to move. I'll say that again. When we are watchful, we are watching with expectation that God is going to move on such a thing. When we are watchful, we are in relationship with God like never before. When we are watchful, we are expecting for God to stand up in the hour. Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12, you don't have to go there. It says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see the branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. I'm trying to help somebody today. God says, what is he saying about you in your life? He says, if you can see what he's saying, he's actively watching over you so the word can come to pass in your life. God says, I am actively, which means he is in, come on, in action and what's going to happen in your life. I'm actively watching over my word to fulfill it in this season. Actively means to be engaged in what is happening. Our Heavenly Father wants us to know that he is actively participating in his word that he has called forth for you. If God said it, it shall happen. Tell to your neighbor, say, if God said it, that's it, it shall happen. If God said it about you, y'all don't believe it. If God said it, it shall happen. Are you actively watching over what God said about you? God says, it shall happen. You and I should be mindful. We are watching the word of God to come to pass. And when we are watchful, we are truthful. I'll say that again. When we are watchful, we are truthful in the hour. Many believers love to watch what is happening in the world and love to quote revelation. However, many of us are not mindful to get enough to respond to the revelation. Y'all know how everybody says, we in the last days. You know, in the book, they don't know no other book but Jeremiah 29, 11. And they know the last days. But God said to me in this hour, if we know that we are in the last days and you and I should be moving with a sense of urgency to know we got to get our stuff together. If we know that we are in the last days, what God told us to do January the 1st, we should have been moving with a sense of urgency. If we know that we are in the last days, then we should, come on somebody, we should be moving out of a sense of obedience like never before. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, if we know that Christ is coming back, we should be moving with a sense of urgency corporately and individually. Holy Spirit should be able to light a fire inside of you to get you to move quickly in the hour. Let me help some of you today. Some of you are not seeing the move of God come on, in the hour because you're not carefully watching over the word in your life. You are now seven months into this year and what did God tell you that you ain't did yet? Who am I talking to? I had a friend that said he hadn't checked his mail and then all of a sudden months later he checks his mail because they put a note on there and there was a check in the mail for him and I'm not telling you to check your mail for a check. I'm telling you to check your mail so you don't miss the details. Who am I talking to? In the hour God is telling you to do something and you have to have a sense of urgency in the hour. Some are suffering from the spirit of procrastination and others are suffering from being stupid in the mind. In other words, drunken in the spirit. First uh, Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, well balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times that the enemy of 
yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, hungry, seeking to devour somebody. Uh, Peter reminded you uh, that, that you are need to be sober-minded and well-balanced. What worked for you last year will not work for you this year. You're operating out of a level of grace. God said last year you were able to finish the year because he stretched the grace that was in your life. But this year, son and daughter, you got to have a sense of discipline. You got to have a sense of commitment in order for the grace that will carry you when you cannot carry yourself. You cannot look for God. Come on, to be, come on, immature with you because he carried you last year. But this year, something got to change. This year, it has to be a new conversation. This year, it got to be new connections. What did I do last year? Come on, that won't work for this year. God says that this year, you got to be watchful over the word that's in your life. I have to be watchful over the word. What does that mean? That means you can also be watchful over your finances. Who am I talking to? Y'all know how that demon of 50% off in 1999 and 20% and 10% and that dress is still in the car. It's in the car because I'm not supposed to be buying it. God says that demon, you got to get rid of the act because you got to be mindful and watchful over your finances. That 5, 10, and 15 tends to add up. Come on, when you are not watchful. need another another week <laughs> uh, yeah <Jay. laughs> she talking to me <laughs> baby you, you don't need another pair of shoes you you don't need another pair of Jordans you, you don't need God says to be watchful in the hour God says do not take his name in vain and that also includes, come on, his resources. We got to stop going to God, asking God for things uh, more of if we're not taking the time to be careful over what he's already giving us. Uh, I can't ask God for a new job if in my current job I'm raggedy. Who am I talking to? We learned a new word from right raggedy to what? Righteous. God is saying in this season, don't be asking me to pay no bill. Come on, don't be asking me to show up and make a way out of no way. The way was you stay off the internet. The way was you stay out of five, nine, and twelve. The way was who am I talking to? Yeah, I don't like when I talk like that. <laughs> we up there asking God to make a way. God says last year I let you have it. I made a way, but this year we're not doing that way no more. This, this year you ain't gonna be crying because you got spilled milk. This year you're gonna keep the milk from spilling. Who am I talking to? Huh? In this hour, you cannot operate out of the level of grace last year for this year. God is saying that we have to be more disciplined in our ways. He reminds us in Jeremiah 1 and 4 and 5, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, uh, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. I hope somebody is hearing this for yourself today. I'll say it again. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God wants you and everybody in this room to know he knew you before you were formed in this womb before. Come on, you went to the next level. The text is saying that you were birthed for a specific purpose and time on this earth. There is a heavenly mandate on your life to complete your God-ordained assignment. We must be mindful in how we're spending the use of our time before Christ returns. There are things that we must complete in the last days in order to be in alignment of our assignment. We must be truthful in all of our ways. Come on, what do you stand with God right now? Are you making the effort to understand Him? Has He called you to such great things that you can't because you ain't being mindful of what am I doing in this place? I got to be 
mindful of who I painted around. What am I doing with this person? I got to be mindful. There's a mandate that's on my life. What am I doing with my finances like this? I got to be mindful that I'm an entrepreneur. What am I doing? Huh. I have to be mindful. When you are mindful, it will upset some people. <laughs> when you are mindful about your life, it will make people who are disorganized in their life, come on, it will make them upset. When you are mindful about what you got going on, baby, some people will begin to chatter and talk about why is she or he doing X, Y, and Z? Because you are disciplined and you want God to do what he has to do in your life. You don't want the delay be because of you. I don't want the delay to be because of me. I, I don't want the delay in my life to be because I ain't listening for God in my life. I don't want the delay to be because of me. God says, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. Come on, that was awesome. uh, and I see another I I thought about why, what time period you needed to be here. Uh, I thought about, he knew not to, to raise me in the 20s. I wouldn't be living today. My mouth is too sick for that. Uh, God knew why he was birthing you for a specific time of this time. So you got to be mindful over that. Understanding God's word is how you are being mindful. I got three points and then I'm done. The first point is we must build our knowledge of the word of God. We must build our knowledge of the word of God. Typically, before you take a test, you study the content. Is that not a true statement? Before you take any test to get a licensure, a certificate, come on, uh, you have to study the material. See, many of us are going into spiritual warfares without studying God's word. You are diagnosing yourself depressed and asking for a spa day, talking about well-being, and God is saying that actually you're in the fight before the flight. I'll say that again. You are self-diagnosing yourself, talking about you are wore out, and you just need a day to kick your feet up, talking about everything is coming for you, and God is saying, baby, you are in the test of the fight of your life, so you can elevate to the next level in your life. Stop diagnosing yourself, talking about nobody likes or wants to be with you. God is saying, I'm elevating you for such a time as this. I'm putting you in a spiritual fight, but had you been in your word, you would understand that the demons is trying to bait you to stand off your post. Had you understand that I'm talking to you in the hour. On the internet, diagnosing yourself. Uh, I don't look like what I've been through. You ain't been through nothing yet. Uh, who am I talking to? Uh, uh, I, I got my therapist today, and God is saying, uh, You're sitting on your therapist's couch, and you really should be in your prayer closet reading your word. We are misdiagnosing ourselves instead of going to God. No, I'm not saying that you don't need your therapist and they're not good for you. However, what I am saying, there are some things you need to come to terms with first. So watch over the word of God in your life. You need to tell the truth about your life. You out here wasting this therapist's time because you will not be truthful. See, a recipe for breakthrough is breaking through the lies of the enemy. A, a, a recipe is breaking through the lies of the enemy. You know, I meet with so many people throughout the week, and they only tell me 30% of their 100% problem. And then they come back to me two weeks later, and then they want another conversation. But until you give me 100% of what's going on in your life, I can't tell you to leave him, because you're telling me that he's free. But he's married, baby. So that's why you're getting all hell. Oh, come on, in your backyard. I can't tell you. Oh, come on, leave the job. Come on, if you've been dishonorable in the job, the hell is coming upon you because you're not moving in order. you got to tell the truth about where you are in this season for God to give you the truth that's in your life. Stop calling that therapist asking them why you still feel like this. God is saying you got to 
returning to that place. I know Saturdays is my day that me and my husband watch TV. And yesterday he chose the wire. Now he gonna watch it 50, 11 times. And I asked 50, 11 questions because that was years ago we watched that. And there was one section in the wire. Oh, how did I see? What's his name? Chauncey? What's his name? What? Cut. What? Cuddy. Cuddy. <laughs> he told, why you asking me what that man named? May not be your son. I said, don't worry about God's business. So Cuddy gets out of his long vacation. Uh, and he returned to his vomit. And there was one scene where Cuddy was sitting there. And they were going to, I don't know, they was robbing somebody. They was doing something. And how did I see it? They were shooting. This young man was on his back. He looked like he was every bit of 16. And so Cuddy looked at this man. And he just looked at him. It was like he was dazed. And then they left. And so one of the, I can't think of the other guy's name. He said, what happened? Why y'all walking in here like I, the job was done? Cuddy said to the man, he said, listen, this ain't any no more. It called Shadar he said, that's all right. You still a good soldier. We gonna use you over here. And he said, no, you're not hearing me. Huh? That ain't in me no more. I can't go to a place where God has delivered me out of. I can't put life go into that for me. Huh? I can't put life into a dead thing because it ain't gonna do nothing but strangle me in the hour. God is saying you got to get like Cuddy in this season and you got to tell yourself and you got to tell everybody else that's around you it ain't in me no more to live like this. It ain't in me huh? no more to walk like this. It ain't in me no more to be broken minded. It ain't in me no more to hang around broke people. It ain't in me no more. To be around toxic family members Baby, it ain't in me No more I can't do it no more I ain't doing it no more I cannot, I will not It ain't in me huh. Cause if you stay in that place Come on somebody You ain't gonna never get to the place Where God has you And when the coming of Christ
and sitting and dipping no more. Because Christ is coming back. And we're not going to be in line bargaining with Jesus. God says he's not coming back to tarry. He's coming back to get those that belong to him. And belonging to God means you're in alignment with the word of God. So I don't care what you got to go home and do in this season. But the first thing you better do is do what God has told you to do. The second thing you better do is believe God that he's the king in your life. We can no longer live, think, or be raggedy and think righteousness is going to stand on it. God is saying in this season, you got to get to where you're supposed to be. I have called you to that job. I have called you to that college. I have called you to that church. I have called you among those people. Get where you're supposed to be. This communion. We're going to do a 20 second check. Some things hit us here. Your therapist can't fix. Some things your mama can't fix, your daddy can't fix, grandma and grandpa. Your good Judy and Joe can't fix. There are some specific things that only God can fix in your life. That's right.
They don't need the fancy clothes. What they need is for you to say, Father, I lay before you so and so. What they need is for you to say, Father, keep my child, my, my cousins, my nieces, and my nephews, my godchildren from seen and unseen harm and danger. What God needs from us, for these young people, is to decree and declare his power and his glory over their life. God says that the enemy is trying to come for our babies. He said that the enemy is trying to make him distasteful to our babies. God is saying in this season, we got to trust what he's doing in the hour. Don't worry about their grades. Worry about their lives. Don't worry about the college that they don't choose. Worry about it. They know how to pray. Worry about it. They got a Bible. Worry about it. They got time and sanctify in the name of the Spirit of the Lord. Worry. Mother and father. I'm praying for 
the child that want to take their life. I'm praying for those children, Father. That's it. So God, we thank you for every person that's in this room. That you shall bless them in this hour. That God, we don't turn back to what we knew, but we look ahead to what you get ready to do. So Father, have your way in this place. We pray for the soul that needs to give their life unto you. If there's somebody in this room that needs to give their life to God or recommit, just repeat after me. Say, Father, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And with your dunamis power, God, that you raised them on the third day. If you just said that you just given your life to Christ or recommitted your life to Christ. The second thing you need to do is get yourself in a biblical based church. Not a church that's going to feed you donuts and coffee, but a church that's going to feed you the word that love you, correct you, cover you and elevate you. Get yourself in that church. And lastly, believe what God has said about you. If you're supposed to be a member of this church, Sister Iva is in the back. She's like four foot tall. She's with the kids. She's in the children, okay? Auntie Gwen, raise your hand. Get to her, and she will get you what you need. Amen. Listen, real quick, y'all know that we're doing the tent revival and the baptism on July the 29th. If you have not been baptized, or your babies ain't been baptized, and you ain't been revived, this is a time for you to get there because we are going to revive the souls and we are going to revive the mind of the believers in the hour. There is a move of God that is going to happen on the 29th. And I encourage you to get there. We got some merchandise. Come up here, Van. Hurry up. You can make clothes. Uh -uh. We got some t-shirts over there. This one is, I will choose doctrine every time, which means I'm going to choose the truth, the word of God every time in my life. Can't no line stand around me comfortably. I am confrontational with the enemy. Who am I talking to? I am very confrontational with the devil. He can't even get comfortable in my presence. That's why sometimes you see people leave early. That's why sometimes they squint and squirt and they see. Because baby, I can spot out a demon. And I'm not going to let it to live here comfortably. So y'all know the different ways that y'all can give. Y'all can drop it in a pot. Uh, but I will say let the Lord bless you and keep you. Let the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and power and Jesus.